Hello fellow problem solvers! So today we're going to be doing a problem from the Czech, Polish, Slovak math competition from 2005, question one. This is a classic, you gotta do this problem. I suggest you try it out for a minimum of 15 minutes, ideally 45, maybe an hour, not more than two, if you'd like to go along with us. Actually not more than 90 minutes even. But if you'd like to go along with us, you know, give it a go. First idea is out on paper for the next five minutes. So my question for you is, what do you see here? I mean, you see a problem and it says okay and is a positive integer. I mean, it just says we have n of these variables, x1 through xn. They're positive real numbers and they satisfy two equations. So what happens if you're told to solve the equation in all the positive real numbers, but you're given n unknowns to equations that smells like what? That is correct. That smells like one side is obviously bigger than another. You know, it smells like some sort of inequality here. You know, this one is n plus one over two times bigger than this one, but this one has powers. And what do we think is the solution here? You know, pause for a minute or two, ask yourself, what could be a solution? And I hope you pause and figured out that, well, n here, here we have, 1 times x1, 2 times x2. Well, if I just set them all to 1, I'll get n. I'll get n times n plus 1 here. I'll get 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, all the way to n. And so he's like, well, what's the solution? Now, how do I connect the two? Well, I want to say that one side in general is bigger than or equal to the other. So which side in general, I mean, with something added or multiplied to it, would be bigger than the other side? for five minutes ask yourself that and the answer is well it's this side has bigger powers than this but you know that could be negative yeah, yeah, so how do we deal with that well x1 is bigger than x1 sure that's not a thing that we need to figure out but x2 squared well it's not always bigger than 2x2 but if we add one to it, if we have x2 squared plus one, that's greater than or equal to two x2 squared, two x2 times x2. Now pause for five minutes, think, what would you do next? And the answer is, well, then you have x3 cubed. You're free x3, how do I get free x3? I have a cube. Well, the answer is amgm. This plus this plus this by amgm is greater than or equal to three times the cube root of x3 cubed times one times one, which is three x3. xk plus one plus one plus one plus one is greater than or equal to k times the k roots of, I mean, xk to the power of k, which is equal to k xk. Now, why also would you want to do something like this? Well, mind you, the equality holds for when all of them are equal to one. So it makes sense that you would be able to get to a solution by using some inequalities, but they need to have the equality condition hold when the things are one. So the, and you also want other thing you have, you have X2 here is alone. And here it's also alone. Like it's not intermingling with the other X size. So given X2 is alone, you're only going to, add really something to it like you're going to have this you're going to add to it functions of x2 or constants given you want to bring it down to a linear combination of x2 you're going to use constants i.e 1 and amgm and now what happens when you sum all of these xn to the n plus 1 da -da -da -da, n minus 1 once and xn what happens when you sum all of these up? These and x1 greater than or equal to x1. Well, when you sum all of these inequalities up, here you get, let's call this bottom and this being up. Here you get the bottom. When you sum these up, it's less than or equal to up plus zero plus one plus two plus three plus all the way to n minus one. And that is what? 
1 plus u plus 3 till n minus 1. Yes, that is n minus 1 times n over 2. And now what is u? Well, u is n. So this is n times, so it's n plus n minus 1 over 2, which is equal to n times n plus 1 over 2. What is b? The bottom? n times n plus 1 over 2. So we have, where we thought we, had an, we have an inequality, but given we have equality here, u plus n times n plus 1 is equal to b, that means we must have equality in every single one of these as well. So that gives us what? Pause for five minutes, finish up the problem, because you might have made a mistake. The thing is, it gives us x2 needs to be 1, x3 needs to be 1, xn needs to be 1. And only then can we say, by this equation right here, x1 is then equal to 1. Right? You can't just say, given the equality needs to hold true between these two, x1 is 1. You can say that for x2, x3, xn, because that's where we used these inequalities. I like this problem. It's a cool little, you know, you have to do, I said, you have to do this type of problem. It's, I think it's a classic, just like having this little like inequality trickery. There's, you know, this logic to it. When you have, usually though, not always, but when you usually have these two systems of equations, so many more unknowns, like n unknowns, come on, two, n could be a million. That's, 999,998 more unknowns than you have equations. So it's going to be very difficult to solve. Unless, unless these two equations force you into something where you only have a small set of solutions. Given, in, given you're in the positive reals, it just screams inequality. And we do it with inequality. And this finishes up our problem. And as always, Thanks for problem solving.